Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the meeting of the City of Salinas City uh, of Salinas Housing and Land Use Committee. We're excited to have so many members of the public join us today. This is a very important legislative body of the city, but we don't always have as many members of the public here with us. So I thank you for your participation in this important public policy discussion. We do have translation services available at the back of our City Hall Rotunda, so if you need those, please make sure uh, to make your way over there. We're going to go ahead and call this meeting to order, and we're going to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Councilmember Osorio, can you please lead us in the pledge? Thank you so much. Madam Clerk, can you please call the roll? Council Member Otsonio. Here. Council Member Sandoval. Here. Chair Rocha. Present. We're going to go ahead and move on to public comment. General public comment is for items that are not on today's agenda. So if you're here to discuss the City of Salinas draft rent stabilization and tenant protection ordinance, please wait till that item is reached on the agenda. This is for items that are not on today's agenda, but within the subject matter jurisdiction of the city's housing and land use committee. Uh, public comment is open for two minutes per speaker, and we're gonna go ahead and open public comment on items not on today's agenda. And public comment is open now. Seeing none in the council chambers, we'll go ahead and go over to Zoom. No comments via Zoom. No comments via Zoom. We're gonna go ahead and move on to our consent agenda. We have one item on consent, and that's our minutes from the February 27th, 2024 Housing and Land Use Committee. If uh, the committee has had an opportunity to review the minutes and would like to take action on them, now would be the time. Motion to approve. Second. We're gonna go ahead and go out for public comment on this item. Seeing none in the council chambers, we'll go out to Zoom. It has been properly moved and seconded to approve the minutes. And we're gonna go ahead and call for a voice vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, seeing none, the motion carries. We're gonna move on to our consideration item. Under administrative reports, we have the rent stabilization and tenant protection draft ordinances, and it's a presentation by our city attorney, Chris Callahan. Committee member Rocha and members of the public. So this afternoon we're going to have just an introductory conversation about rent stabilization and tenant protection. And so Cassandra, I'll ask if you can forward the slides because this is not working. So just to sort of set um, the framework for this afternoon's conversation. Next slide, please. Um, the purpose of this meeting is not to adopt a rent stabilization or tenant protection ordinance. This is just to begin the discussion. There will be many, many more discussions, both at this committee and with the public, and then ultimately at the city council. So before anyone gets nervous that we're taking action on this or the council's taking action on this immediately, this is just the start of our conversation. So in the attachments, you have a pre preliminary draft ordinance, which has three separate components, and we'll get to those in a little bit more detail later on. And then this afternoon, we wanna receive your questions and your comments, committee members, and also hear from the public. So next slide, please, Cassandra. So cities do have the ability to enact rent stabilization ordinances and tenant protection ordinances, even though these issues are addressed in state law. We are limited as to what we can do, and we'll talk about that, but there is no question about your authority to enact these sorts of ordinances. Next slide, please. And before we go further, I just wanna make sure that there is a clear understanding of what we're talking about. So when folks hear rent stabilization, sometimes they get that confused with rent control. That's setting the amount of rents. Salinas does not have the authority to lock in rental rates at a specified amount. Some cities in California have that authority, but they were already in place prior to a change in state law. So we do not have the local ability to establish rent control, but we can establish rent stabilization, which is a control over the annual increases of rent and um, how often those rents get increased per year. And when a tenant moves out, um, the rent for the next tenant is not restricted, so it can be increased at that point when there is a change in tenancy. So next slide, please. We're moving on, and we'll talk about three different um, areas of state law just to sort of give us a frame of reference. The Costa-Hawkins Rental Housing Act, the Ellis Act, and the Tenant Protection Act of 2019. 
So the Costa-Hawkins Rental Housing Act generally prohibits vacancy control. So this allows owners of property to raise their rents when a tenant moves out. They can set those to whatever the market is willing to bear. It prohibits regulation of rent increases on some properties. This is single family homes that do not have an ADU, condominiums or cooperatives built after February 1st of 1995. And that's a really important date to remember because there are restrictions as to what you can do both before and after for those different properties. The Ellis Act is um, an act that allows owners to withdraw a rental unit from the market. The city, however, may require landlords to take additional steps before removing a unit from the market. These are built into the draft ordinances that were attached to your report. There can be a notice of intent to withdraw that you um, provide to the tenant. And then if the unit is placed back on the market, you can offer that unit back to the displaced tenant. That is also a provision that's in your draft ordinance. The Tenant Protection Act of 2019 set increase limits at the lesser of 5% plus a percentage change in the CPI or 10%. Again, whichever, the, whichever those two amounts is lower is, is the maximum. Only two increases per 12 month period may be approved or implemented. And this applies to tenants occupying a unit for at least 12 months. So they have to be in that unit for 12 months before they get the protections under the Tenant Protection Act. It does not restrict initial rent on vacant units. Single family homes and condos are exempt, except for very limited situations. Um, I'm sorry, next slide please, Cassandra. And it does include other protections for tenants, including just cause eviction and relocation assistance. So the question then becomes, what can the city do in the context of these state law provisions? The city can establish a lower increase limit. Remember we had um, the limit set by the Tenant Protection Act of 5% plus the change in CPI or 10%, whichever is lesser. The city has the ability to establish a lower increase limit than that 5%. The city can also limit the number of annual increases, for example, one per 12 month period instead of two. This is why it's often called rent stabilization, right? Because you are limiting the number of times and the amounts by which rents can be increased. It stabilizes it for the tenants. So you can also apply these additional limits to the first year of the tenancy. So the person does not have to be in that unit for a 12 month period before these protections can apply. So going on to the next slide, please. One thing that we've heard from the community um, are concerns over application fees and the application process. The city has the ability to regulate those. I know that Santa Cruz and San Jose have been looking at this. This is something that um, this committee and the council may wanna also look at. Units containing health, safety, fire, or building code violations, if those are found to exist on the property, you can further restrict the percentage of increase in rent and further restrict when that rent can be increased. So this is a really important thing, right? So if there's a substandard unit, you have even more authority to restrict the um, rents and when those rents can be increased. I just wanna mention two new state laws that folks may not be familiar, familiar with, AB 12. It caps the security deposits. This goes into effect on July 1st of 2024. We've heard that there are some concerns from the community about security deposits, so this will be addressed in state law. SB 267 relates to the use of credit history in an application, um, and so that's something that folks need to also pay attention to. Next slide, please, Cassandra. So one of the things that the city needs to be sure to do is allow for a reasonable rate of return on the property. This is in benefit of the landlord. It's required by the constitution. Some case law has sort of um, sussed this out a little bit, but you must provide a mechanism for ensuring that landlords receive a just and reasonable return. So there's a process built into the draft ordinance that allows for a landlord to petition for a rent increase beyond what the city's rent stabilization ordinance provides if we get to that point. The city cannot indefinitely freeze rents. You can't impose inflexible caps on rent increases, um, and you cannot prohibit some landlords from attaining rent increases. So in your preliminary draft ordinance, there are three components, rent stabilization, just cause eviction and tenant protection, and then anti-harassment. So the rent stabilization ordinance sets limits on rent increases. And if you've read it, you will see that there are some blank spaces in there for the amount of rent and the number of times that the rent can be increased. These need to be determined over the course of conversations with the community, with the legislative body, this committee, and with the council. 
and it will also depend on an economic analysis that the Community Development Department and I have, have commissioned, and we'll get to that in a second. The draft ordinance on rent stabilization allows for landlord petitions for rent increases, but it also allows for tenants to petition for lower rents. And there are certain criteria that need to be met in each of those circumstances for either petition to be heard. It requires the landlords to provide notification of this ordinance to the tenants so that the tenants are aware of their rights, not only under state law, but also under city law. And it provides for a number of violations and remedies that are enforceable by the city. One of the things that we heard from the community was making sure that there's an effective enforcement mechanism. A lot of folks may not have the resources to retain counsel to assist or um, other sorts of assistance, this draft ordinance allows the city to step in and enforce its own ordinance. The second component of your preliminary draft ordinance is just cause and tenant protection. It requires a whole bunch of notice to tenants of their tenant protections, not only under state law again, but also under local law. It provides for relocation assistance. This is another um, policy issue that this committee and the council are going to have to um, discuss. That's the amount of relocation assistance that will be provided. Um, if the unit is put back on the market, the draft ordinance requires that it be offered back to the relocated tenant so they can reoccupy that space if they're willing to. And, and it allows for civil enforcement, again, enforceable by the city, but there's also a private right of enforcement. There's also an anti-harassment component to this draft ordinance. It prohibits the landlords from taking certain action against tenants. Most of them center around making sure that the tenants are adequately informed and not taking action against them unless they are informed. It requires them, again, to provide notice of this ordinance to the tenants, and it provides for violations and remedies, both criminal and civil. Again, it provides the opportunity for the city to enforce these, as well as a private right of action. So some things for this committee and ultimately the council to consider are the resources available for this program. These are um, labor-intensive programs, or at least they can be, depending on how they're set up. And so this committee and the council really needs to understand the level of resources that are available for this sort of program. Enforcement is one of the things that we've heard. Um, enforcement takes time, it takes staff, it will be a burden, there's no question. There also needs to be a procedure built in for landlord requests for rent increases and tenant requests for rent reductions. The way the preliminary draft ordinance is set up is that those requests go to a hearing officer rather than being handled by city staff. That was intentional to alleviate the burden on your city staff and it provides a third party neutral sort of arbiter to consider those criteria in those requests. Going on and continuing with implementation of this, you already have your rental registration program in place. One of the things that the council has discussed in the past is a rental inspection program. We don't have one in place now. You should consider whether you want to implement a rental inspection program. This will be important, for example, for those properties that are substandard. And as we're evaluating when rents can be increased and the amounts of rental, rental increase, it would be important to know whether a property is substandard. We're also going to need to implement an education and outreach program. Um, this is a new program, it is a robust program, and if adopted, we will have to roll out an education and outreach program so that folks understand their rights. That will take resources. You should consider whether or not the city will partner with nonprofits to provide that educational and outreach component. And one other thing that I've seen in the several comment letters that came in today is something that the city of Monterey recently did, and that's the rental assistance program. The committee may also want to consider that as another component to this program. It's a different um, sort of mechanism, but it is out there. And like I said, the city of Monterey recently did that. It will require financial resources above all. So as we um, sort of launch into this months long conversation, we will need a whole lot more information. Community Development Department and I have, um, we will be contracting with an economic analyst to provide us some data about the amount of rental housing in the city, particularly those that were built after February 1st of 1995. We need to know some data on the number of households, the renters, the landlords, and ho homeowners, as well as some real economic data on the city's rental market. That will be important for us as we consider whether to implement a rent percentage increase that's less than 5%, um, and how many times rent can be increased each year. It'd be um, we, we need that data before we can reasonably move forward, in my opinion. So going on to the process and the next steps, this is just the first step in this process. 
We will have community and stakeholder meetings over the next couple of months. I think those will occur both at this committee and just with staff and the community and stakeholders. You're probably going to need more than one housing and land use committee meeting per month um, because this is an important topic and we committed to having this before the city council in June. It looks like we'll need to have a special meeting on June 25th. Um, so that will be your third meeting in June. I just wanna get that on your radars now. Um, this is an important topic. We see a lot of people here and I expect it will take a lot of time to get through that meeting. So we're recommending a June 25th special meeting on this topic. That's it for the presentation. Um, community development staff and I are here for any questions that you may have. Thank you so much for your presentation and all of your work on this, Mr. City Attorney, and thank you to our city staff as well for all of your work on this. I'm going to open up this up to questions from the committee, then we'll go out for public comment, then we'll come back for committee comments, and are you seeking direction but no vote? Um, general direction, yes. And also, if it's allowed, Mr. City Attorney, um, Comments period will also provide an opportunity for members of the council to ask questions as well. If things came up for you as you were hearing public comment and you have additional questions or you had more time to sit on the presentation, you have something else to ask. I want to make sure that this committee has the opportunity to get into the weeds of this and as, ask as many questions as you need um, as we navigate this process together. So we're going to open up to questions from the committee and we'll start with Council Member Sandoval. Yeah, you, you mentioned there's a, a new law, uh, I don't remember the number of it, uh, regarding deposits and how they'll be um, regulated in the future. One of the things we've heard from uh, residents is that often they have to pay a deposit first and last month's rent. So what will that do to address that? I'll have to look at that assembly bill um, committee member and I will get that information to the full committee. Okay, yeah, uh, those are all my questions for now. Councilmember Sornio. Yeah. Um, so, in the is is there a way, uh, City Attorney, that we can look into? Um, I've I've uh, maybe like lawyers or like contracted lawyers or a list of different attorneys. Um, one of the things that I have found is in speaking with uh, residents. Um, even when something like this happens, uh, where somebody um, is given a notice that the property will either be sold or that um, there's going to be remodels done and things like that, um, and they seek um, attorneys or legal advice, there's, there's not a lot of um, attorneys that are willing to take on um, a lot of, like, renter protections and things like that. Um, is, is this something that you've heard about in the past? And uh, I guess would be my first question. The second question would be, is there any type of component or in your recommendations, um, it doesn't sound like this should be something that at the city there should be a separate department or um, professionals that can help in this. Can you kind of just speak a little bit to that? Um, yeah, let me unpack that a little bit, okay. committee members. So currently, if a tenant feels they've been aggrieved by a landlord under state law, they would have to seek private legal counsel or some association to assist with them. And I know that there are some that do that. Um, so I think that's one of the things that's different under the preliminary draft ordinance anyways, is it gives the city the ability to enforce. So if a tenant has an issue um, and there is, uh, um, they can demonstrate that the landlord violated the law, then the city could step into that role and enforce its own ordinance, right? So that's the difference between um, just relying on state law and then incorporating this into your municipal code because then that would give my department the opportunity to enforce the city ordinance and protect tenants in that way. And it, wouldn't necessarily have to be me. It could be, um, you know, my office could contract with attorneys who could do specifically that, but it provides another enforcement mechanism to provide tenants um, some additional assistance. Okay, and you know that 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 does sound that does sound great. Um, and and again, I would just share a story of um, somebody that was trying to get some legal advice um, for for a situation that happened. But because some of the 
um, organizations and some of the property management groups um, obviously have um, these uh, attorneys already as part of, that represent them, um, I've heard that the same attorney will not take on a renter if they are protecting the, the, um, the property manager. Okay, so, uh, so then you're saying that that would be a way of, of, of us being able to enforce it. Now, now, do you, now as far as enforcement goes, do you find that um, it would be like a code enforcement enforcement part or would like code enforcement at all be involved in kind of the enforcement part of it? Or would it li strictly be like legal and maybe your department? So code enforcement would deal with the health health, safety, life issues at the property. I think enforcement of the ordinance would be um, from my department, from my office, but it would certainly require um, support from the other city departments, right? So it would be a team effort, but enforcement of the ordinance would come from my office as it does now. Okay. Now, um, I, I know one of the things, obviously this is work, so with work comes cost. Um, is this something that um, and, and maybe this is for, you know, kind of like future presentations, but do you know of any type of funding or grants that the state of California currently has to be able to uh, maybe um, get funds to be able to help with, you know, rental assistance and things like that? Is this something that maybe um, our housing trust fund can, can use? Is this, is this something that we can use funds for, something like that? So it's a good question, and we'll look at, into that a little bit more specifically and get back to you. Okay, thank you. Okay, no further questions, Chair. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, my question is pertaining to um, the elimination of the 12-month period. Does the current draft ordinance speak to um, how long a tenant has to occupy a unit before the protections established under the ordinance would apply to them? Um, it does not because they would apply immediately upon adoption of the ordinance. Okay, so that 12 month period would not apply That's to right. residents of the city. That's Understood, right. thank you. Um, as we're discussing the conversation on application fees, um, what, is that currently addressed within the draft ordinance? It is not, and I have a placeholder in that, okay. um, in the draft, to, to do some more research on that and report back. Okay. Um, I, the reason I bring that up is because oftentimes you'll hear that someone will apply for a unit and it's, say for example, a mother and three children and each child and the mother is essentially assessed a fee uh, to apply for this unit. Um, do you think it would be within the authority of the city to limit that to one fee per um, application, if you will, like you can only charge it on one person. You cannot charge it for every single member of the household. That's one of the issues or the questions that I'm looking at, okay. member, and so I don't want to um, opine on that without researching it. Understood. And then currently um, in the ordinance, I did read a portion of it. It says essentially if um, the tenant protection speaks to just cause evictions. And so it's my understanding based on this draft ordinance, if a landlord essentially wants to remove a unit from the market and the tenant did nothing to cause an eviction, uh, the landlord would have the opportunity, um, if the tenant agrees, to go through a buyout option. Um, and also, if the landlord wants to evict the tenant without cause and the lease is up, or, or I don't know exactly when it applies, but when does the two-month rent um, payment from the landlord to the tenant come into play? Because there's something that if a, if a tenant vacates a unit without cause, the, the landlord has to pay the, the tenant two months rent, correct? Yeah, that's in the draft ordinance, and that's separate from the buyout agreements, right? The buyout agreements are if um, a landlord comes to a tenant and says, I want to buy you out of your lease so that you can, so that the landlord can put it back on the market at a different rent, right? So there are certain criteria that need to be met um, in terms of that buyout agreement, making sure that they inform the tenant of all of their rights and their um, landlord's obligations under that. So those are two, two sort of separate issues, committee member. So the buyout applies w during the duration of the lease, and then the other one would apply when? Um, I, which section are you talking about specifically? Do you remember? It's. 
This is for no fault, just cause, right? Yeah. So when the tenant has done nothing wrong, but the landlord wants to move them out, it um, at that time is when they have to pay them the two months of actual rent um, in effect at the date of the notice. And that's on page 14. Mm -hmm. um, would that apply during their lease or would it apply after their lease? During the lease. Okay. Is there anything that says a landlord cannot evict a tenant without cause? Um, good question. We'll look into that. Okay. That would be my, my request to look into that. And then the other question that I have is, um, are there any protections for a tenant when the lease is up? Uh, or do the protections no longer apply once the lease is over? That's right. They would no longer apply? They no longer apply. Um, in terms of funding this program, it has come up as a concern that um, this might be a labor-intensive program to manage. And this might be a question for Lisa, our director of community development. Um, within our um, CDBG program, we do have funds set aside for um, the furtherance of fair housing programs within the city. And it's my understanding we currently apply those funds to echo housing to do um, almost like, a, um, I, I don't know what the right term would be like, in, to figure out whether or not landlords are being uh, are discriminated against tenants, right? Could we use that money to fund the operations of the rent stabilization program? It's audits, I believe that's what it's called. Fair housing audits. Give me one minute, I think we have to turn on your microphone. Hello, there we go. So this is Francisco Brambilla, the interim housing plan manager and really um, the keeper of our uh, grant funds. And so uh, Francisco, you were just indicating that you did not think that they could be used for the operation of a program. They can be used for contracting services like with Monterey College of Law to provide mediation services as well as continued tenant protection services through an organization such as ECHO. So those could be expanded, but not to run the actual program to pay staff to implement that program. Okay. And what about the funds generated through the rental registry program? Can we apply those to this? Well, um, we have limited funds coming in at this time. So we only have um, received $53,000. Um, so that is not even covering the rental registration expenses at this time. So that is something that is being revisited. Understood, thank you. Um, and then I also wanted to ask, those are all my questions for okay. you, thank you so thank much. You. Um, I wanted to ask our city attorney, can you speak to the importance of taking up the anti-harassment ordinance as well? Because it's my understanding if you want to move forward, you would have to move forward with, it would be up to the committee or the council whether or not to move forward with all three of the options. Um, and I certainly am interested in pursuing moving forward with the anti-harassment ordinance, but can you speak to why that's important for us to consider? I think it's important to consider because, as we've heard from the questions from committee member Asarnio, is um, tenants aren't often aware of their rights. And this um, portion of the ordinance is intended to prohibit and prevent landlords from essentially bullying tenants into um, moving out of a unit without understanding their rights. And so that's why I think it's important that you bring all three together as a package, right? Because you have the tenant protections that are built in that can be enforced, but it also puts the onus on the landlord to behave in good faith, right? And not engage in bad faith activities in order to try and circumvent the, the tenant protections and the rent stabilization portions of this ordinance. Thank you so much. And um, as we move forward with this discussion, how, can you speak to the community outreach and stakeholder meetings? What do you envision as the path for this to move forward? So what I envision is um, I will certainly make myself available to go out into the community and hear from um, stakeholders, from residents um, at times that are convenient for them and at locations that are con convenient for them. I think that the community development department staff will as well. Um, I heard some questions about whether the um, technical advisory committee that already exists would be engaged, and yes, we will engage with them as well. So whomever is interested in meeting with us and providing information that they think may be relevant to um, our refinement of this ordinance and pr presentation of a final ordinance to this committee and the council, we're, we're happy to meet with them and hear from them. 
Thank you. And in the ordinance, draft ordinance, I do see an, a portion of it says de demolition is going to be a section that's going to be added. What is your, what are you thinking on that? Yeah, that's correct. So you raised a question about um, if a property is demolished, what happens? And so I need to look at that some more and we'll report back on that um, yeah. provision. And in terms of rent increases, there are two options that are currently outlined in the draft ordinance. One would be not to exceed the lesser of whatever amount, percent or percent of the most recent 12 month increase within the CPI. And the other option is um, rent increases may not exceed this set amount. Um, what do you envision is the mechanism that will determine the percentages that are allowed to be established in the ordinance? Well, so that's the economic analysis that we've commissioned. We need to get that data so we understand what the current market conditions are now so that we can, if we want to do, if the council wants to do a lesser percent, um, have the support for doing so. Um, and the reason why there are options in here is because sometimes calculating the percentage of the consumer price index can be complicated. Not everyone may understand that, and it may be easier for folks to understand just a straight percentage as opposed to do two different percentages, right, and determining which is lesser. And so that's why that option is in there. Thank you for that. And uh, at this point, that concludes my questions. So now we're going to go out for public comment on this item. We're going to have public comment be limited to two minutes per speaker. Um, are we ready to go? So we're going to go ahead and start with public comment uh, on this item. Uh, my name is Nelson Vega, and I'm an, <clears throat> a property owner. And right here, I have 110 tenants, and 50% of the people have been there over 10 years. This, this ordinance is going to upset this kind of, of, kind of uh, management. I, I'm very uh, uh, receptive to the tenants I have and to their needs and everything, but you are, you're, you're combining a lot of good landlords and using a blunt instrument, and it's wrong. That's not to say that there aren't bad landlords. I know plenty of them, and I sympathize with the problem. But the, the, the blanket that you've got here is all in the tenant's interest. And I like to see the document worked so there's a balance so it protects the landlords. There's a lot of good landlords like us. They don't have 10-year tenants. And some of these are 15, 20-year tenants. Some of them are eight and nine that aren't in the green. They're more than 50 to 60 percent. I, I venture to say you don't have many landlords who have owned buildings for 30 years. And I've owned both these buildings for over 30 years that have that record. But I do sympathize with the problem that we have of the overcrowding of apartments, especially in, in, in parts of East Salinas. But the problem is units being built. This does not help being units being built. You need to concentrate on getting supply. Supply will bring the price down. Putting ordinances that discourages people like me to invest in apartments or in this town is not a good idea. I can simply just decide to say, you know, I'll just leave, take my equity, and I'll go to some place that appreciates good landlords. We are not all bad people, and you need to know that the majority of the landlords are fair and equitable, and they're looking for just a, a, a fair market rate of return for the incredible amount of investment that we have in there. And thank, I thank you, you for your, for your time. Comment. Hello, Kevin Dayton, representing Salinas Valley Chamber of Commerce. This is a tough, tough thing to speak on, especially in front of a group of people who, many of whom are struggling with their families to pay their rent. I understand it, and it's understandable that people would say, I would like the government to help me out where I can to, to control the rent. And this is really an issue, and in some case, uh, you know, there's a lot of empathy and, and emotion that's in this the human feeling about it. Uh, but I do think there's also, I have to bring up logic and analysis too, and that's something that you have to consider as well. And uh, the, the problem is here is even in a centrally controlled economy, there is supply and demand that affects price. Uh, earlier, you just heard a speaker talk about not enough being built. Here, here is the chart that I've just put in the next business journal for the chamber about the regional housing needs allocations and uh, very poor in some areas. And sometimes I say, is the city really doing enough to try to 
build those numbers up and maybe, uh, you know, the desire instead to do rent stabilization is an easier way to do it than the difficulty. And it's very difficult to figure out how are you going to build, you, you reach 2% of your allocation for moderate housing. How are you going to overcome that? Uh, but my concern is that uh, when you do take that supply demand chart and adjust the price on it, everything's going to be distorted and probably what will happen is your supply of rental housing will go down. I could definitely see people saying, you know what, I'm just going to take my housing out of the market even before this takes effect. So you mentioned some obvious abuses. If you can narrow what you're planning to do to focus on those obvious abuses, I think that would be better than doing the broad rent stabilization that you're proposing. I think there may be bad effects from it. Thank you. Ah, buenas tardes a todos. Mi nombre es Jesús Estrada, soy el organizador de vivienda con Centro de Abogacía de la Comunidad, mejor conocido como CCA. Hoy estoy para, bueno, agradecer al abogado y a los que están en degrado por el buen trabajo que ha hecho, porque es mucho trabajo para hacer ese tipo de proyectos. Ese es uno. El otro también es... Que voy a interpretarles eso. ¿Quiere pausa, pausa, sí, pausa o qué? Okay. Okay. Porque aquí ya dijo todo un párrafo, entonces. <laughs> Good afternoon, my name is Jesús Estrada. And uh, I, or, I am here with the committee, uh, I mean, with the organization named CCA, which provides housing advocacy. I am here, first of all, to thank the attorney and all of you for all these projects that you're engaging in. Estoy aquí para tres, para hablar tres cosas. Uno es uh, muchos, claro, como dice el propietario acá, no muchos son malos, la mayoría son buenos, pero sí existe este malos propietarios que abusan a los inquilinos. Uno de eso es hay familia que ya tienen 10, 15 años viviendo ahí y claro, pues esa familia paga menos a la comparación como está ahorita. ¿Y cómo usan ellos pretexto para desalojar esa familia? Dicen, voy a remodelar el apartamento y necesito que salgan. ¿sí? Y después van y pintan nada más una pintada y ya, contrata a una nueva familia que paga más la renta. Eso es muy común que está pasando aquí en Salinas. Ese es uno. El otro es… Pare ahí, por favor. <risa> I know that there are bad landlords. Um, I know that there are bad landlords, but the majority is good. But yes, there are some bad ones that do abuse the situation. There's um, renters that have been there 10, 15 years, and what happens? Um, one of the, the pretexts that they use to have the family move out is that they say they're going to be remodeling that unit, and all they do, uh, the remodel only consists of painting, and then afterwards a new family moves in, and then that family pays more. Ahora, antes no cobraban este, el agua. No cobraban drenajes, no cobraban la luz que hay en pasillo. Ahora los propietarios están cobra, cobran, cobrado, están este, cobrado todo eso a los inquilinos. Los inquilinos son los que están pagando todo eso ahora. ¿sí? Están buscando la manera como no gastar dinero que el inquilino pague todo. Entonces es otra cosa que están cobrando ahora. One of the things that is happening at this point is that, um, well, compared to before, um, people, you know, uh, renters weren't asked to pay for the water, for the drainage, or for the light down the hallway. But the property owners now are charging for all of this, and they are looking for ways to decrease what they pay, and they're making the uh, renter pay more of that as a way of minimizing the amount that they pay. El último. Este, hay, ahorita, por el momento, estamos identificando que hay 50 ciudades con, con el control de renta. ¿sí? ¿Por qué Salinas no? Entonces, uh, 
ahora puede trabajar en eso para que haya un control de aumento de renta, porque hay muchos que están abusando, ¿sí? aumenta más de lo que es, uh, requiere la ley de 10%. Sí, eso no es justo, no sé, para esa razón estamos aquí para hacer comentarios. Gracias. And last, um, right now we have identified 50 cities who do have rent control, so why not Salinas? Uh, there are many property owners who are really abusing the situation right now. As far as rent control, as far as it not being more than 10%. And that's why I'm here, to make these comments. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So <clears throat> I didn't clarify this at the beginning of the meeting, so I'll do it now. Uh, it's two minutes per speaker, and it'll be four minutes for um, speakers in Spanish. We're going to do two minutes for the Spanish, and then two minutes for the uh, interpretation of Spanish to English. Se le olvidó aclarar esto al inicio de la reunión, que para las personas que hablan en inglés, el comentario va a ser solamente dos minutos, pero para los que hablan español, debido a la interpretación, pues va a ser de cuatro minutos. So she, uh, the speaker speaks Mixteco only, so she will, um, the lady to her right will be interpreting into Spanish, and I will be interpreting from Spanish to English. It will so, do six minutes. Yeah, yeah we'll do six, six minutes. minutes. In este caso, entonces, será seis minutos. Gracias. Yeah, and then, Thank you. Doña ya ya renta vas a chinga. 2015 ni ya no ni a distrito ni a cinco ni ya vistiera ya y yo nueve años tengo ni ya tan y que en dura mil ya vino ya vistiera ya dos mil doscientos ya vino ni cuarto Buenas tardes, este, soy residente de aquí de Salinas, del Distrito 5. Este, desde el 2015 empecé a rentar, empecé con pagando mil y ahora estoy pagando dos mil dos mil doscientos cuarto y es un apartamento de solamente un cuarto so I am a resident of district five in 2015 I started to I started by paying a thousand for one bedroom at this point, I'm paying $2,200. Uh, uh, desde que entramos a, a ese apartamento, hemos puesto quejas de algún uh, mal estado de la casa, de la propiedad, pero hasta ahora no, no han querido como dar ese mantenimiento y todavía uh, seguimos ahí por lo mismo de que no hay um, uh, lugar para nosotros y tenemos niños, entonces, por lo tanto, um, sí necesitamos que se dé mantenimiento. Pero llevamos nueve años ahí y aún así no han dado mantenimiento desde que entramos. Ever since we started living at the apartment, um, from the beginning, we um, complained about the bad state of the property. No maintenance has been given to the property. Um, we have been, and, and the reason why we haven't looked for another place is because of, we haven't been able to find one. Uh, we do have children. We've been there for nine years. Um, 
Ah, en el lugar que vivimos tiene un patio afuera de, de ahí de donde vivimos y ahí cerca también está el parqueadero donde parqueamos nuestro carro y ah, ya está muy rayado el carro, entonces por lo tanto ah, una vez que miré que los niños estaban ahí pateando ah, la pelota a mi carro, salí para llamarles la atención, a pedirles de favor que, que no jugaran cerca del carro, pero en eso el vecino que es el papá de, de esos niños salió y incluso Incluso me quiso golpear, pegar. Um, entonces, dimos queja con los de la oficina, pero ellos no hicieron algo al respecto. The place where we live at, the, uh, there's a patio outside and a parking where we park our car. Our car is pretty scratched up. I saw the kids um, kicking a ball, and I complained. Uh, that neighbor, whose children those are, he came out and he tried he, he tried um, hitting me. I did go to the office to complain about this. <laughs> Uh, muchas gracias por escucharme y abrir este espacio y quiero que mi voz sea escuchada, que estamos necesitando mucho ahí en ese lugar porque está muy pobre el lugar donde vivimos y muchas gracias por la atención. Thank you very much for having listened to me. Thank you for opening up this space for my voice to be heard. Uh, there is a lot of need out there. There are a lot of uh, poor, poor ones. Um, thank you for your attention. Voy con el mixteco primero. Él habla mixteco también. Pero es diferente. Oh, es diferente el mixteco. Sí. ¿No se entiende ah, para nada? Poquito nomás. Oh. Sí, ah, pues yo me, me gustaría empezar sí. de ese lado, pero, lo puedo, pero lo, puedo tradu sí, no lo, lo puedo traducir yo en español también. ¿Usted puede traducir el mixteco sí. a español? Sí. Ok, entonces, entonces le voy a dar voy a seis minutos. El mixteco va a ser en español. Ok. okay. okay. Sí, ah... Um, pues buenas tardes, ¿verdad? Eh, voy a empezar con mi lenguaje. Pues como ustedes han visto, um, hay muchas comunidades que no entienden el español. A, a lo mejor sí les van a entender poquitito, pero pues casi no entienden mucho. Por eso um, yo quisiera traducirles eso en lo que es el mixteco. El este, um, Yucutanani Agustín González Ortiz. Uh, San Luca, que ellos están Luca Guerrero. Sara, ya, ya no quitan dividirá. Aña renda vega, ya sin inducir, ya en su vinta, aña salina, yo que chico, acuña, ciudad, no, ya, ya, ni ya, bichavo renda, sara su vinta, hay que do, do yo, chinga, yo sabara na, na casa renda, no, na, na, yo vi na casa renda, ra, que, chinis, o na, que, condiciona, acá, o che, ya, ni, sab, ni sabía ni a quién ni cómo ni yo ni ni sabía ya con ni nacaba ni a visto ni a si señora que es que a mí no se llega será ni a ni da ni a su un cuitito va que si ni nada no será ni a ni a que ni a la que tan dios viste será que ni se ni a ni a cubi ni a con tan lindo ya que no na na tan será ni a con ni de ni a casa no en favor lo na cubi casa controlado ni a ya pago de renta acá, no con eso o nano. Ok, déjeme nada más decir algo. Eh, usted es Agustín González Ortiz sí. de San Lucas Guerrero. Sí. Ok. Oh. Permítame. Eh, bueno, es nada más su introducción, okay. quiero decir. Um, good afternoon. Um, since a lot of the people that are here don't understand the other languages spoken as well, that's why I want to uh, talk to them in, my, in our language, in Mixteco. Uh, my name is Agustin Gonzalez Ortiz, and I am from San Lucas, Guerrero. I believe he wanted to translate it to Spanish and then have you translate it to English. ¿Quieres dar sus comentarios en español? Yeah, no, I, I know, yeah. This Or is are, a, you, are you... This is introduction. Okay. The, he's, still gonna, he's gonna 
Understood. Yeah. Okay. My okay. apologies. Entonces, um, lo que acabo de decir en, en lo que es en mi lenguaje el mixteco es que um, como muchos sabrán, verdad, aquí en aquel no no solamente en Salinas está pasando lo que estamos viviendo si no son varios lugares, a lo mejor ya tomaron control en otros lugares, pero aquí en Salina, la verdad, uh, yo veo lo que es eh, mucho abuso, ¿verdad? Por ejemplo, el este, hay mucho, muchas familias que viven en hogares que no son apropiado, a, apropiados para vivir. Por ejemplo, hay veces que uh, cuando llueve, el, el agua pues, entra a toda la casa, ¿verdad? Y uno le dice a los, a, a los dueños o a los que rendan apartamento o, o la casa, que pues arreglen algo de ahí, pero pues ellos no quieren, ¿verdad? No, 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 no nos escuchan, ponen excusas de que no, pues el otro día, otra semana, otro mes y así van sucesivamente, pero al momento de lo que es el pago de lo, lo de la renta, entonces ahí pues nadie habla, ¿verdad? Entonces, no, pues nomás llega y dice, no, pues así te voy a cobrar, ¿verdad? Entonces, pero ¿dónde está la petición de la comunidad? O sea, no porque la gente no... Hay mucha persona que no, no, no sabe de sus derechos, pero pues aquí um, si uno entiende lo que son los derechos de las personas, entonces ahí lo, se puede aplicar, pero en este caso mucha persona no conoce eso. Entonces, um, por eso quisiéramos um, el control de lo que es de la renta y la protección también um, del inquilino, pues para poder um, ni, ni ponerlo a nivel, más que nada. Y pues... Para, es el mejor para toda la comunidad. En, esa es la petición. Sí. Gracias. In Mixteco, I just said that, as um, as many of us know, uh, Salinas is not the only city going through this, but there are many cities who do now have rent control. There are many families uh, now who live in places that are not appropriate for habitation. They do tell the property owner, but the pro property owner comes up with excuses. Oh, it'll be another day that I'll do that. Or, but when it comes to paying the rent, oh, they are very prompt with that. So um, the problem assess also is that many don't know about their rights. So that's why we want rent control and renter protection and that's why we are supporting this petition thank you buenas tardes mi nombre es alejo domínguez primero que nada gracias al abogado a los concejales que están aquí dedicando su tiempo para escuchar nuestras necesidades de todos nosotros primero que nada si estoy aquí no es por parte mía, sino que es para todos los que estamos presentes, para pedir a ustedes, concejales que están presentes aquí, para que tomen en cuenta nuestras peticiones de que este, estamos pidiendo el 2% de lo que es el interés de la renta. ¿Por qué? Porque en muchas ciudades de, de California sí está controlado eso y, y entonces aquí en Salinas no, no tenemos esa oportunidad y por eso pedimos que escuchen nuestras peticiones y, y po, puedan hacer algo al respeto. Ok. Mis, oh. Good afternoon, my, na my name is Alejo Dominguez. Thank you to the city attorney and thank you also to all of you for um, making the time to listen to our needs. I'm not here because of me, I'm here because of all of us who have these needs, we are advocating for a 2% increase. Um, here in Salinas right now, uh, this is our opportunity for you to listen to us and to do something about it. Mi siguiente pregunta es para el abogado. Por ejemplo, si el propietario nos dice, por ejemplo, que se va a vender la propiedad, pero la propiedad no la pudo vender o no la puede vender porque la propiedad está en muy malas condiciones. Y luego dice, ¿sabes qué? Se tienes que salir, por ejemplo, un mes porque tengo que arreglar la propiedad. Durante ese mes que yo tengo que salirme, tenemos nosotros la obligación de pagar nuestra renta 
estando nosotros afuera o, o cuál es la situación? My next question is directed toward the attorney. If a property owner says that he is going to sell the place, but the place doesn't sell because it's in bad condition, or if he says, you know what, can you please um, get out just for one month while I fix the property? Um, are we obligated as renters to continue to pay rent for that one month? What is the situation currently? Bueno, por mi parte, es, era todo lo que quería sugerirles y gracias y buenas tardes. That's all I wanted to say, suggest on my part. Thank you. Good afternoon. English. Thank you. Good afternoon, council members. I'm here once again. My name is Genesis Mojica, and I'm the youth organizer at CCA. I'm here to say one thing. Uh, supply and demand does not and will never equal to the ability to take advantage of hard workers. And I strongly believe in that. I see day by day families struggling to make ends meet. And these are the people that feed our tables, like we always say, right? But yet, they are squished in one room with their five kids. And yes, that is very unfortunate, but this is something that we could fix in the next few years. Again, su supply and demand will never equal the ability to take advantage of a family and hard workers. We need to do something about this issue, and I genuinely believe that enforcing some type of regulation on rent with rent control or um, protection of renters will fix that. Thank you. Thank you. And before we go to the next public commenter, um, if you have specific questions of the city attorney related to the ordinance, please leave your name and contact information. We'll follow up with you. This is an opportunity for you to share your comments to the committee, and there'll be more opportunities at, at the future town halls and so forth, but we can't respond uh, from the dais. But if you leave your contact information, we'll follow up with you. Thank you. Hello, community members. Um, my name is Justine Ramirez, and I'm with CCA. I just was listening to our comments or from the community and um, hearing from the landlords, and I just wanted to give my comment that um, landlord profits versus affordable housing is not the issue, and it's not what this is about. And you know, return on investment isn't about um, overcrowding versus overcrowding of apartments because families can't afford to provide, you know, housing under the current um, conditions and that rent stabilization is one step towards fixing the solution for community members that are facing hardship for housing and trying to live. Um, and so I just wanted to make that comment and that if it's about return on investment or about um, profits for landlords, I think that's a separate conversation that should be had and supply and demand is also a separate thing that should be discussed and it's needed um, for us to have more housing. But again, this is not what this is about. It's about stabilizing the rent and not having landlords um, that do abuse the increases on an annual basis uh, continue to do that. And so I just wanted to make that comment. Thank you. Buenas tardes, miembros del, del Comité de Uso de Terreno y Vivienda. Mi nombre es Norma Villalobos, soy miembro de la comunidad y una organización con el Comité de Padres Unidos, con construyendo comunidades saludables en el Condado de Monterrey. Esta tarde me encuentro aquí ya que vivienda es una necesidad muy grande en la comunidad que impacta a las familias. Good afternoon, members of this committee, uh, as far as the U land use and housing. My name is Norma Villalobos. I am a member of uh, the organi an organi community organization. I am with the parent committee, um, and we are trying to build healthy communities in Monterey County. Uh, this afternoon I am here regarding this issue of housing since it is an, a very large need in our community that impacts our families. 
más a los estudiantes, ya que no tienen su propio espacio. Nuestra abogacía en la educación nos ha traído este tipo de historias. Nos gustaría que tengan la oportunidad de su propio espacio en casa y no compartir en, en, en el hogar con muchas familias. More so even the students, uh, since they themselves don't have their own space. Our advocacy in education puts us in touch with many of these um, life stories. We would like to have the opportunity for them to have their own space uh, and not have to share a home with their families. Es muy importante ya que las, nuestras familias están en un propio hogar, pagan 1,200 y es la mamá y cuatro niños. Por esa, por esa razón les pedimos que por favor apoyen una estabilización de alquiler y, pro, y protección para las, los inquilinos. Muchas gracias por su tiempo. It's very important. Uh, for instance, we have a, a mother with four children that is paying 1200 uh, per month, and that is one of the reasons we would like for you to um, support this uh, renter protection and stabilization, stabilization. Thank you for your time. English, Espanol. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Alma Loredo, yo soy miembro de la comunidad del, uh, residente del Distrito 2 y también soy una organizadora con el Comité de Padres Unidos, Building Healthy Communities. Esta tarde me encuentro aquí porque quiero traer la voz de las familias, eh, ya que nuestra experiencia en la educación nos deja entender más a fondo los retos que están viviendo. Y creemos nosotros que una estabilización de alquiler y protección de renta puede ayudar. Y vamos a ver más jóvenes cursando carreras o terminando sus carreras y teniendo la oportunidad de vivir en nuestra comunidad. Y también vamos a poder ver familias que ya no tendrán que estresarse más de lo normal por los aumentos de renta. Y así tampoco los jóvenes tendrán que dejar la escuela y trabajar para ayudar a sus padres para tener un techo. Queremos ver. Um, good afternoon. My name is Alma Loredo. Uh, I am a res resident of District 2, and I'm also an organizer with Building Healthy Communities. I'm here this afternoon to give the community, uh, community a voice because uh, in our experience working with the, fa the families when it comes to, their ed to education, we have seen their struggles. Um, uh, we have young people who... Oh, we do feel that rent stabilization can help them. We have young people, uh, more of them, if this were to be the case, more of them finishing their studies and the, family won't, the families won't be as stressed. This way, young people won't have to be working to help support their families. Así como menos familias viviendo en vehículos y teniendo problemas um, de emocionales y con los niños y la salud mental debido a eso. Así que realmente les agradezco la oportunidad de escucharnos y también su liderazgo y compromiso con nosotros, la comunidad, para encontrar mejores maneras de apoyarnos y realmente mejorar las vidas de nosotros los residentes. Gracias. This way we will also have less people living in their cars and they will be experiencing less problems with their children in term, terms of the children's mental health. Thank you uh, for the opportunity to, for listening to us and also for your leadership. Maybe we can find better solutions so that all of us can support each other as residents. Sí. ¿Cuál? 
Sí, buenas tardes, Yo soy Carlos de la Cruz, soy inscrito 5. Ya va a y cucha renta, ya no yo y inscrito 5, subí ya 2015, que se cobran a 1500, tal vez 2024, que se cobran a 2600, tal cual ya Santana. Buenas tardes a todos, mi nombre es Carlos de la Cruz um, y en dos, eh, soy residente del Distrito 5 um, y en el 2015 me cobraban, nos cobraban 1.500 de la renta y ahora no, ya nos están cobrando 2.600. 2.600. Mm. Good afternoon uh, to everyone. My name is Carlos de la Cruz, I live in District 5. Um, in 2015, the rent we were paying was $1,500. Now in 24, we are paying $2,600. Aquella parqueadero que ya cobra aparte gana 80 dólares, que ya cobra una parqueadero. La basura que ya cobra en 2015, que ya cobra una basura en 130, la vez que ya cobra en 200, 224, que ya cobra una basura. Que ya cansa, que ya está con dimi, renta, que ya basura, que ya estufa, que ya cobra, que ya cobra, que ya depósito, que ya cobra parte en la estufa, que ya refi, que ya baño, que ya tibi baño, que ya cobra parte en diván. El, el parqueadero lo cobran, nos cobran 80 dólares, um, la basura lo cobran, cobran de 130. 130 nos cobraban, ahora nos están cobrando 200. 124. 224 uh, y aparte de eso también cuando nosotros pedimos que nos uh, arreglen eh, las estufas o también los refrigerado, refrigeradores aparte de que nos piden como un uh, depósito para entrar en, en la vivienda, antes uh, nos, co nos cobraron o sea, mil, mil. mil cobraron dos mil Uh, y el depósito nos están cobrando dos mil. Entonces, uh, aparte de eso, cuando nosotros pedimos uh, que nos um, apoyen con el mantenimiento de las estufas, uh, nos cobran aparte de, uh, aparte de que nos cobraron los de, el depósito. The, um, the charge for parking lot is $80. For, um, in 2015, they were charging us $130 for garbage. Now they are charging $224. Uh, when it comes to, if we, uh, aside from that, if we ask that our um, stove or refrigerator be, be fixed, um, hmm. may I clarify? En cuanto al depósito, eh, perdón, en cuanto al estufa y el refrigerador, ¿qué fue lo que dijo? Que le cobran. Nos, nos cobra parte. Yeah, so they just tra charge us separately for uh, the stove and refrigerator. Also, the deposit for first coming into that dwelling before used to be $1,000, now it's $2,000. Taka, tu conducina, na mana, no piso, no chica, na inga, na shara, cocina, chistón, cuacan, nando, con hondura, sabi, na mana, que encaixa, na cocina, na mana, es vi. Y nosotros cuando pedimos que arreglen el piso, uh, nos piden que nos salgamos a, a, para poder, este, que nos, para que ellos puedan arreglar, arreglar el piso. Y ya cuando nosotros nos salimos um, para regresar, nos están cobrando dos mil uh, para depósito. Y la verdad para mí no me alcanza porque yo soy el único sustento que trae como ingresos a, lo, a mi hogar. Tengo cuatro hijos y mi esposa um, está a cargo de ellos porque si ella sale, um, 
Ella no, ella no está trabajando, entonces yo soy el único que um, trae ingresos al hogar. When the unit is going to be fixed, then um, they request that we get out and in order to perform uh, whatever repairs. And then we're, when we come back in, they request a deposit of $2,000. Really, I don't make, me make enough. I'm the only provider, and I, my wife takes care of our four children. She cannot work outside the home. Yo con ti andi kan abinat kasana sasu vinanya kan orang ini nana kasana ikhwan orang ini orang ini yo punya kumani nun tu ranya kan sasu nanda tu syabib ana sa. Y esto es todo lo que quería comentar y muchas gracias por su atención. And these are all my comments. Thank you very much for your attention. Buenas tardes a todos. Mi nombre es Anita García y yo vivo en el Distrito 5. 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 Buenas tardes a todos. Mi nombre es Anita um, Cortés y yo soy residente del Distrito 5. Um, en, en el uh, apartamento donde yo estoy rentando es de dos cuartos. Me están cobrando $2,800 um, y cada mes me están uh, subiendo de la renta $8, dólares, $5, dólares, $8, dólares, uh, varía mucho, pero cada mes me están subiendo. Um, good afternoon. My name is Anita Garcia. I live in District 5. I live in an apartment that is a two-bedroom apartment. I am paying two two thousand eight hundred. Um, every month, they increase my rent by either five dollars or eight dollars. This is something that takes place. I mean, it varies, but it does take place every month. Tanya kun indu pananda lo karenta ba chin kokun je mintu shishun ba nya luz tu kisha tu ba nya dos cien cincuenta cien sesenta ra anda renta ra kasi tres mil vi nya iyo iyo ta nya kun indu na chin je ta na shin du nanda lo karenta ba. Y yo lo que pido es que nos apoyen uh, para el control de renta. Um, cada mes nos están cobrando 150 también de la luz y um, eso se cuenta como casi 3 mil dólares. Entonces, a nosotros no nos alcanza para pagar eso y, nos, y a mí sí me gustaría que nos apoyaran con este control de renta. Gracias. What I am requesting is that you support us in, in rent control. Um, for um, electric, they, we are being charged 150, 160. And uh, added, adding that to the rent, it's almost 3,000. So I really would like for you to support us in this rent control. Nya menu nya iji ranya tinu unda mensaje ba kuni na chiko no nami ufisina na dai nya kuni ka ishina ra kono nami ba ta na anda na kono na ufisina ba na dai nya kuni ndra kubi ka andura tinu mensaje ba rata tu bandu ka andu tu saba tu bandu kia bandura ndo obai nindu kuasa. Y donde yo vivo, um, a los dueños de los apartamentos nos piden a nosotros que mandemos mensajes. Um, sus oficinas están cerradas y nosotros, la verdad, um, no podemos, eh, no sabemos escribir, no sabemos leer. Entonces, uh, es, nosotros pedimos que, aunque si ellos no, um, no hablan nuestro idioma, 
pero que sí tengan abierta la oficina. Where I live, the owners asked that we send messages to the office. Uh, their offices are closed. Um, we don't know how to read or write. We request that if they don't speak our language, that they please keep their offices open. Um, lo que venimos a pedir es que no nos suban la renta, que nos apoyen también a uh, um, ustedes porque no nos alcanza para pagar to toda esa cantidad y muchas gracias por uh, escucharnos. So we came here to request that you please uh, support uh, this rent control because really we, it's, we don't have the enough means to make those payments. Thank you for listening. Um, voy a hablar. Um, buenas tardes. Uh, mi nombre es Marisela Ramírez. Um, yo también hablo mixteco, pero uh, lo voy a hacer en español. Este... Yo soy del um, residente del distrito 6 uh, y um, lo, bueno trabajo con la organización con la organización Centro Binacional, pero la verdad um, pido de su apoyo también porque hemos bueno yo como trabajo con la comunidad he escuchado muchísimos casos no son los únicos y también me incluyo um, hay muchos uh, abusos para nosotros los inquilinos. Y um, algo que sí se me hace injusto a veces es por qué a la hora de um, algo que nosotros como inquilinos está, venimos para pedir los propietarios, um, los dueños de casas están a la hora. Y cuando nosotros pedimos uh, mantenimiento, como estaban diciendo las, uh, lo, los que pasaron an anteriormente, hasta el mes o hasta el año uh, van, pero no dan el mantenimiento a la hora. Y nosotros, uh, me ha pasado también que uh, nosotros nos piden la renta a, al mes, pero cuando pedimos algo para mantenimiento no están ahí. Entonces, ¿por qué ahora cuando a ellos sí les afecta están a la hora? Entonces, uh, pues pido para mí, para mi comunidad, Uh, y para todos nosotros que estamos aquí, que nos apoyen con la, el control de renta. Y también uh, como residente, yo sé, um, yo tengo responsabilidades porque uh, sabemos que no es nuestra casa, uh, pero también pagamos la renta, pag um, estamos como al mes pagando la renta. ¿Y por qué no nosotros como podemos um, hablar bien con con los uh, dueños y uh, inquilinos también. Queremos como llegar a un acuerdo con ellos, no como que estamos en contra, no. Es algo que, que nosotros estamos buscando, cómo nosotros nos podemos ayudar como comunidad, como humanos. Entonces, pido um, que nos apoyen con esto y pues este, hablo por mí y por, mucha, por toda la comunidad y más de la comunidad indígena porque como estaba diciendo la señora, nos piden que pa, um, mandemos mensajes, pero no todos uh, sabemos escribir, no todos sabemos leer y más a veces no, uh, le manda, nos mandan mensajes y es en inglés. Entonces, uh, pues muchas gracias por darnos el tiempo de um, darnos su tiempo y dar este tiempo para poder nosotros uh, dar nuestro testimonio. Gracias. Good afternoon, my name is Maricela Ramirez. I do speak Mixteco, but I'm going to do this, in, do this in Spanish. I am a resident of District 6. I work with the Binan Binational Center organization, and I uh, support many 
since that's the work that I do, I get to see a lot of people, and I include myself, because um, like many have already said, when it comes time to doing maintenance, they, sometimes they, it doesn't get done at all. Sometimes it gets done a month later, sometimes a year later. But like we saw here, you know, if something like this comes up, then these same landlords, you know, they're here right away. Um, we are requesting that we be supported in this rent control. As renters, we know that we have responsibility and that we know that we have to stay uh, on top of paying our rent. What we'd like is uh, to help each other out as a community, as humans, to come to some way of, of working together. And I'm not speaking for myself, I'm mainly speaking for the indigenous community because as was, was mentioned before, oftentimes they ask us to send messages but not everyone knows how to read and then sometimes they send messages to us and they're in English. So thank you very much for your time and for allowing me to give this uh, testimony. Good afternoon, council members and staff. I first, my name is Adam Pinteritz. I sent a letter on behalf of my employer the, earlier this afternoon, but right now I'm speaking as a private citizen. Uh, I'm also a renter who is rent burdened. The majority of my income goes to rent. I've been a renter here in Salinas, living in a place that was frankly in substandard conditions and I didn't report it because I didn't want to be displaced and no one should have to go through that. And I've been a renter searching for months for rental housing here in the city of Salinas before and I know that that's very challenging as well. You can spend all of your money for your deposit just on application. So I say all this to say that I understand something needs to be done. It absolutely does. State tenant protections has already been enhanced and is at least partially redundant with the provisions in this draft ordinance. Given that staff and budget challenges of enforcement, does it, does it may not make more sense to educate people about the existing state law? Make sure that gets enforced. This would be more immediately implementable and help uh, renters in need sooner and cost less to the city. So I would urge an education program that can be rolled out faster. Rent stabilization, which is also in state law, so also partially redundant, uh, has in other cities resulted in a loss of housing as rental property owners decide to exit the market. For example, in the Seattle metropolitan area, they lost 6% of their inventory. And in the San Francisco area, they lost 15% of their inventory. This severe loss of inventory results ultimately in higher costs of rent and less availability, ultimately hurting the very renters that it aims to help. And in addition to that, in the city of San Francisco in the wake of rent stabilization, um, it was found in a study that the likelihood of being evicted from a rent stabilized unit was increased by 240%. So it incentivizes turnover and I don't think that's ultimately in the best interests of renters. Rental assistance would help rents, renters financially almost immediately without these bad side effects. I know the city also has no money or staff power for this, but it doesn't have that for enforcement of the codes either. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Amy Salmina. I'm a local property manager, a property owner, and a renter. I could not agree more that we need a more affordable housing in Salinas and throughout Monterey County. I have had the opportunity to read the draft of the ordinance, but I feel that we need more time to discuss what is being presented. I understand that this is a draft and several areas of this ordinance need to be fully outlined. Our goal is to provide and create more affordable housing, not to create an ordinance that is not proven to work. We need more information. Maybe talk with other cities, other towns, who have experimented to see what works and what doesn't work. Along with that, we need more studies, surveys, more transparency. Once we have that, we need to have a dis discussion with the community as a whole. Maybe have an open forum so questions and answers can be given. I, I know I personally could have answered almost every single question that was asked today by council or the people here in our community. I would also recommend working with ATTAC, which is a group of several diverse stakeholders 
That was a, su a successful compromise in implementing the rental registry. I was actually a part of that TAC. I haven't been reached out to as of yet, so I'm hoping that that will be coming soon. Lastly, there should be a panel of advisors who are familiar with housing, financial analysis, and economic development. We do not expect this panel to have answers experience or knowledge of how to fix this. If that was a quick fix and you would have known, it would have been done by now. This is for all of us. We all need affordable housing. My tenants, my property owners, we, we need these things, but we need an answer. We need more housing, more development, more things. We all know it's supply and demand, right? The more supply, the less demand. And really please focus on Section 8 to stop, please, raising the rents. They're raising their level, which then raises the, it raises the uh, stability of our owners, and then they want to raise their rents. It just causes more problems for the middle class. So if you could help on that, we'd really appreciate it. Buenas tardes, mi nombre es Consuelo Rosales, yo también soy miembro de varias organizaciones. Ah, yo les vengo a, a contar mi testimonio, um, estoy pagando 4,500 de renta, mm, tengo desocupado un cuarto, no lo he podido alquilar y por lo consiguiente, si yo no pago la renta el día 3, para el día 4 me suben cuatro, este, 50 dólares más, para el día 5 son 70 dólares. Entonces, si no puedo pagar 4,500, pues menos voy a pagar los, los intereses que me están cobrando. De igual manera, el papá de mi hijo, de mis hijos, ahorita no me, no me está pudiendo ayudar porque está lloviendo y no, no ha tenido trabajo. Me veo en la penosa necesidad de estar rifando un, unas, una olla para poder pagar mi renta. No se me hace justo. Creo que todos tenemos el derecho de tener un hogar. Así que les pido de antemano y gracias por su tiempo y esto ya tiene que ser inmediatamente porque no podemos quedarnos en la calle. Se los agradezco mucho. Gracias. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Consuelo Rosales. I am a member of various organizations. I'm here to give you my testimony. I am currently paying $4,500 in rent. Um, I do have a, a, an empty bedroom, and I have not been able to find a renter for that. If I don't pay my rent by the third, by the fourth, I get... Um, I, get, I have to pay $50 additionally. By the fifth, if I pay it then, I have to pay 70 in addition. If I am not able to, as it is, pay the $4,500, it, it's even more difficult for me to, to pay it if, if they continue to increase, uh, if they charge me the fourth and the fifth. The father of my children hasn't been working because of the rains. I have been um, doing... Um, like a lottery uh, for for people to buy my my pots and pans, and it's just not fair. Uh, we all have the right to uh, affordable housing, and we don't want to end up on the street. Thank you. Buenas tardes. Uh, mi nombre es Nidia Soto y estoy aquí um, como organizadora de la comunidad con Building Healthy Community y estamos aquí varios de nuestra organización agradeciendo a los concejales González y a, a Rocha por traer este tema desde octubre del año pasado y al abogado que ya escribió y trabajó en, la, en el borrador. El pasado 6 de marzo, miembros de la comunidad tuvimos la oportunidad de tener una junta y presentar los puntos, siete de los puntos más importantes uh, que cubren las necesidades o algunas necesidades de nuestra comunidad en formar parte de una protección de alquiler. Um, y ya existen estabilizaciones de control de rentas eh, y protecciones para inquilinos en muchas, múltiples ciudades del estado de California, eh, empezando con un 1% hasta un 5% de limitaciones en aumentos de alquiler. Y pensamos que nuestra comunidad está sufriendo 
esta necesidad de, de una protección, de un alto, un alto a los altos porcentajes o aumentos de, de alquiler. Y creemos que Salinas, nuestra comunidad, se merece un 2% que sea parte de esta ordenanza. Y sabemos que los concejales van a poder um, hablar sobre este tema, sobre el porcentaje que se va a poner como limitación. Y pedimos en nombre de nuestra comunidad que esa es una necesidad que, que se necesita demostrar la representación para nuestra comunidad. A este, a este tiempo, con una alta necesidad de vivienda que está sufriendo nuestra comunidad y todo el estado de California, parece ser que en vez de mejorar, estamos empeorando. Viviendas es un derecho humano y basado al alto costo de viviendas, pudiese decir que no fuéramos humanos. Tantas familias viviendo en, en una habitación, compartiendo tantas carencias por la experiencia de, nuestro, de nosotros como miembros de esta comunidad, podemos escuchar y ser parte de las necesidades y experiencias de nuestra comunidad. Se es extremadamente urgente tomar acción respecto a este tema. Nuestra comunidad está sufriendo demasiado. Dichos sufrimientos impactan diferentes áreas, salud, educación, salud mental y empeoran la economía. Limitan oportunidades de nuestra comunidad a salir adelante. Solamente están, estamos trabajando para pagar el alquiler, pagar un techo para nuestras familias. Por favor, tomen atención de la necesidad de la gente, de la necesidad de su comunidad. Y estamos aquí para, para formar parte de esto. Sabemos que este, los propietarios no todos son malos, pero una mayoría sí. Desgraciadamente, están exprimiendo lo poco que gana la gente aquí porque cuando pueden poquito salir adelante, ya le inventan otro vil aquí. Ahora me vas a pagar el drenaje, ahora me vas a pagar la basura, ahora me vas a pagar tantas cosas. Entonces, pues les pido, por favor, tomen atención en esos siete puntos que ya hemos compartido con ustedes y agradecemos y apreciamos su trabajo. Gracias. I'm sorry. I'm trying to make sense of my notes here. I'm so sorry. Good afternoon. My name is Nidia Soto, and I am here with uh, the, the organization uh, Building Healthy Communities. Um, so thank you to the various council members, uh, Council Member Gonzalez, Council Member Rocha, and the attorney uh, who have been working on this draft. On March 6, uh, a meeting took place, and we were able to come up with six points that we feel could help our community. With seven, seven points. With seven points that we feel could help our community. Um, we would like to uh, propose that uh, Salinas um, Protect its, its residents with rent control, a protection of maybe only allowing a 1% increase. There's other cities who allow 2% increases. So um, as part of this, is this um, these changes, these ordinances. As, as when speaking of this topic, this if you could place this limit on the percentages, in this way, you would be showing that you, you know, your representation, your support. There is a high need of housing in this community, not only here in Salinas, but all over California. And it seems that instead of improving, things are getting worse. But this is a human right. Um, Many are living in small rooms, and they are, they are lacking a lot of things. So it's extremely urgent that you take action for your community who is suffering because this impacts in many ways. It impacts economically, it impacts their mental health, and many are only working to just pay a roof over their head. Um, 
Yes, there are some good landlords, but I would say the majority are bad because they are squeezing our community. The, the people here are only make just enough just to pay their rent, and the very moment they start to just get ahead a little bit, then they get hit with some other charge. Now you have to pay garbage, now you have to pay this. But thank you. Hi, my name is Audrey Wardwell. I am a local property manager um, and landlord as well. And I was grateful to stay back and listen to everyone speak today. Um, what I hear is there is an undeniable need for housing within this community, affordable housing. I also hear a lot of people who don't understand their rights, who and I don't know why we don't form a team within the city to educate them on their rights. Um, that could be a solution with this as well. Changing the rents and creating an ordinance to prevent a landlord from being able to maintain their property will only remove rentals from this market. It will eliminate housing, which is the opposite of what everyone wants, even the landlord. This is not what we want. And I ask you guys to engage the community <laughs> collaboratively, inclusively, and allow other voices to be heard to add to this ordinance. Because things can be put together to help the community, but unilaterally going after the landlord isn't the solution. Creating more opportunities for education, inclusiveness, understanding the high cost of utilities, understanding the process of renewing your lease, paying your rent on time, all of the basics. and I encourage, and I'll speak a little more bluntly than I would prefer, this um, committee to really understand the laws. There were seven que several questions asked about the current rental control laws, and you guys didn't know the answer. You should know that, and you should be working with people who understand it completely, because you can't create an ordinance without understanding the current laws that are in place. Thank you so much. Buenas tardes, mi nombre es José Albor, ya en otras ocasiones he venido por aquí, ¿verdad? Eh, yo soy eh, integrante de la mesa directiva de Acosta Plaza, de 303 unidades. Este, como yo les he comentado anteriormente, necesitamos aseguranzas en California. Nuestro gobernador, no sé por qué, las quitó de California. No hay competencia de aseguranzas. Mi asegurador me dice en mi casa personal… Este año me subió, me subió 500 dólares de aumento la aseguranza por mi casa en la personal. Este, los property tax este año me aumentaron también. El año pasado aumentaron los property tax. La gasolina está arriba. ¿Cómo queremos atacar una renta cuando la gasolina, los property tax, este, los precios? Yo soy handyman. Yo visito la Home Depot todos los días. Antes de la pandemia, yo compraba un 4x4 para hacer una cerca, 11 dólares. Hoy lo compro 23 dólares, lo doble. ¿Cómo vamos a atacar una cosa si lo principal es la economía del país? ¿Nos hemos puesto a pensar en la economía? ¿A dónde vamos? Estamos participando en una guerra de Ucrania que ni nos pertenece, gastando el dinero allá, cuando la casa de nosotros, que es América, se está quedando pobre. Van a ver de aquí a unos años en adelante, cinco o seis años, no sé, cómo vamos a estar. Si ahora nos quejamos de rentas y eso, ojalá que tengamos para comer. Con eso vamos a estar millonarios. Porque no, ¿quién siembra? No hay siembras en Salinas. Eh, hablan también de las rentas de los renteros yo oigo todo eso yo como soy handyman yo voy y encuentro la propiedad el rentero le da mal uso a la propiedad el dueño se le entrega bien a los dos tres meses le da mal uso mal uso al baño mal uso a la cocina parece que de aerofrín chicharrones en esa estufa y nunca la limpian el, el lavamanos 
pésimo. El drenaje, tapado. Cuando no debemos de poner papel sanitario en el toile. El drenaje se atasca y se va a atascar. Y un día no va a salir nada. Hay un lugar donde poner las escuadras de drenaje. Un contenedor aparte. Hay que llevarlo al bote de la basura. Hay que hacer un esfuerzo por nosotros mismos. No queremos que mi vecino me arregle mi casa. El otro también. No. Yo tengo que poner de mi parte. Yo mismo. Si yo no pongo nada, ¿cómo quiero que los otros me pongan? Yo agradezco por su trabajo, por su gobierno. Estoy agradecido. Pero hay que trabajar en ambos lados. No tiremos nomás la piedra para este lado y para allá nada. No. Igualdad de derechos, igualdad de todo. Sí. Y miremos los otros puntos principales. Cuando no podemos bajar los impuestos, tráigame las aseguranzas a California, porque yo estoy ocupando una para la Costa Plaza. Yo quiero ya competencia de aseguranzas. Hace tres, cuatro años había competencia de aseguranzas. Ahora no. Por eso la que está, pues, se sube. No hay quien le compita en los precios, ni en nada. La mía está en Filadelfia, la que yo tenía aquí. Se fueron para allá. Y ahora todo es por email y todo clase de arreglos. Ya ni siquiera está aquí. A ver, díganme. Yo quiero escuchar eso, que ya regresaron las aseguranzas a California, que ya la gasolina se bajó, que ya los precios en la Home Depot ya no se fueron para arriba, ya bajaron. Yo quisiera escuchar eso y que nos eduquemos, más que nada. La educación debe empezar por mí, primero por mí y por mi casa, y luego los demás. Cuando yo no me educo, ¿cómo voy a educar al vecino? Gracias por sus comentarios. Vamos ¿Cómo? a tener que… Tiempo para que se haga traducir al inglés. Muchas gracias. Good afternoon. My name is Jose Abon. I am with um, the board of directors of Acosta Plaza, or work for an organization for Acosta Plaza. Um, the insurances in California, the governor, he took them away. This year, my insurance has gone up. This, I'm talking about my, my own property, my own home. It went up. Gas has gone up. Um, you know, when it comes to prices, I'm a handyman. I go to Home Depot. Before the pandemic, I used to pay $11 for a 4x4. Now I'm paying $23, more than double. And here's another thing. I mean, our economy, where are we headed? We're supporting Ukraine when here at home, America, we're going to be poor. I think in five or six years, we're going to have to see how things are. I hope we have enough to eat because here in Salinas, they, there, may be not, there may not be enough crops. Um, I know that renters also uh, don't necessarily treat the properties as they should. The owner gives it to them in good condition two, three months later. Uh, the stove is horrible. It's like they fry um, and they fry there, and they never clean. And then when it comes to the restroom, the sink is awful. Uh, when it comes to the drainage, it's clogged because they use too much toilet paper. They should be using a separate receptacle. You know, with me, I can't expect that my neighbor will fix my house. I have to do things for myself. I, uh, I appreciate the job that you guys are doing in your governance. I, what I want is for them to be equity when it comes to uh, rights and all that goes with that. Again, when it, when it comes to the insurances, uh, the insurance that we have for Acosta Plaza, because there is no competition, they're the only ones, and they, they keep raising the price. They're in Philadelphia, and now everything we do is through email, so they're not here to be on top of what needs to be repaired. I would like for the insurances to come back to California for the gas to go down, for Home Depot prices to go down, and that among other things. Thank you.
Buenas tardes, Comité de Viviendas y Uso de Terreno. Mi nombre es Verónica León. Soy una organizadora comunitaria con CCA, el Centro de Abogacía de la Comunidad y residente de Acosta Plaza. Hoy estoy aquí para pedir el apoyo para la estabilización de renta y protección para los inquilinos, ya que los aumentos de renta son muy grandes, suben de 500 o a 700 dólares en Acosta Plaza, siendo una comunidad privada de aumento. Y cuando hay, también lo que estamos pidiendo, cuando hay a noticia de desalojo, que la reubicación sea de tres meses. Y con estos aumentos, las familias ya no sabemos si comer o pagar la renta, porque la verdad que son muy grandes los aumentos. Sí, pero no hablo inglés. No, no me puedes decir así, porque entonces no, ellos estaban escuchando el español. Okay. Good evening, Housing and Land Use Committee. My name is Veronica Leon, and I'm a community organizer with CCA and a resident of Acosta Plaza. I'm here today to ask for your support for the Rent Stabilization and Tenant Protection Ordinance, seeing that increases on rent have been skyrocketing and go up by $500 or $700. Property owners should give a three-month notice to be relocated for, for people to be able to relocate instead of increases. Families don't know if they should pay their rent or provide food for their families. Dijo algo aparte de esto? No. no. Okay, porque le iba a decir que me lo repetí. <laughs> Buenas tardes. Este, gracias por oírnos. Siempre que me paro aquí me pongo bien nerviosa. Um, a veces revivo el momento del año pasado cuando nos aumentaron de renta. Este, buenas tardes, mi nombre es María Chávez. Donde vivo es un proyecto de vivienda de 75 apartamentos, ayudado por Hatch y Caji. Para entrar uno, compra una membresía. Y, y sí, agradezco porque haya estos proyectos, porque sí ayudan a las familias. No más el problema que tenemos es que nos hayan aumentado mucho el año pasado. A nuestra familia fue de 660. Nosotros pensamos que no fue Hatz ni Caji el que nos aumentó. Este, ya que hay varios problemas que nos pasa, acoso, intimidación. El, el trabajador o administrador dice que debemos de arreglar los problemas allí, que no debemos de andar divulgando lo que nos pasa. Este, pero nos meten miedo y sabemos que este proyecto tiene abogado y nosotros no. Nosotros pagamos ese abogado, pero es para que defienda el proyecto, no para que nos defienda a nosotros. Y uno no sabe dónde ir y que nos ayude a cambiar todo eso. Cuando queremos hablar con Hatch, no nos contesta y que dejemos mensaje. Dejamos mensaje y no nos contestan para atrás. ¿Será porque no hablamos inglés? Y esto pasa. Esto es, estamos pasando por mucho, por muchas cosas y todo está caro y no nos alcanza el dinero porque eso necesitamos una estabilización de renta. Muchas gracias. Good afternoon. And she already gave you her name. I didn't catch it. Um, it's really difficult for me when I get up here because sometimes I relive the moment when our rent was raised. We live in a project that gets funding from CACs and CAHI. And the problem is that we don't feel that it's CAHI or CACs that has raised our rent, but our rent went up by $660. But this isn't the only problem. Uh, there is uh, harassment where we live. The administration tells us that we shouldn't be talking about what goes on over there um, with others. <laughs> 
What happens also is that this project has an attorney. However, we pay those attorneys, but those attorneys whom we pay aren't there to defend us. When we try to speak with HUD, we leave messages in Spanish, but I wonder if it is because of this that they don't return our message. We're going through a lot, and we just don't have enough me, uh, money to make ends meet. Buenas tardes a todos. Mi nombre es Teresa Merino. Soy de la comunidad chatina. Yo hablo chatino. Estoy aquí para dar mi comentario y parte de lo que he visto que está pasando en mi comunidad. Uh, soy voluntaria en CCA, CCA y estoy apoyando un comité de viviendas que están donde están viviendo les están aumentando demasiado la renta. Les mandan mensajes, pero es en inglés. No les dicen como va a llegar una carta en español para comentarles el por qué se les está aumentando, si quieren pagar, lo pagan y si no, pues se pueden ir. Es todo lo que les dicen. Y es injusto porque es una comunidad uh, pues que no entiende español ¿no? y no, no conocen sus derechos. A veces me toca que ir a ayudarles a mandar mensajes para que vengan a arreglar el apartamento porque hay mucha, está en muy malas condiciones. Personas que recién se acaban de mudar, al mes ya aparece el mo en las paredes porque nada más, como dice el señor que pasó hace rato, que entregan los apartamentos en buenas condiciones, no es cierto. Solo les dan como una maquillada, una pintura encima. Esos apartamentos necesitan mantenimiento, cosa que los dueños no quieren invertir porque ya no les conviene, pero sí quieren seguir aumentando la renta cada mes y es muy injusto porque ahí viven niños, niños que se están enfermando constantemente por la humedad. Y estoy aquí pidiendo para que haya un control de renta y protección para los inquilinos y que no estén cobrando como los parqueaderos aparte. En algunos lugares no lo cobran y en otros sí. Yo vengo del Distrito 4. Gracias. Good afternoon, my name is Teresa Merino. I speak Chatino, I work with CCA, and I am with their housing committee. Uh, to many in, in our community, they raise their rent and they send messages to them in English, but they don't give any explanation. It's just like, um, here's the raise, if you pay it, you can stay, if not, you're gonna have to leave. Uh, they don't speak English. I oftentimes have to send messages myself requesting repairs. We're talking from a month after the people have moved in. Why? Because uh, oftentimes, well, there was another speaker that said that the homeowners um, do provide these units in good condition, but I would say that that's not the case um, because just a month later, you start to see the mold coming through the paint the, the owners don't want to invest, and they raise the rent, but the thing is there are children living there, children who are getting sick because of that mold and humidity. So we do need that uh, protection and stabilization for the renters. I am a member of District 4. Oh, I, and also I wanted to say that um, for them not to charge separate parking. Good afternoon. My name is Carrie Appling. I am a uh, property manager. I represent several owners and investors that choose to invest in the city of Salinas. And I agree with uh, the overwhelming need of low cost housing. That is obvious. I don't know that this is the solution to that. Um, I think that your overwhelming need for education should absolutely come first. As one of my colleagues said, there are many questions that could be answered simply. And I really urge this panel to please include property owners as well as tenants and some dialogue between them so each can understand each side of the situation that's at hand. Um, our property owners are experiencing hikes in 
interest rates and they have a 1% increase in property taxes every year and insurance has gone up over 25% in many in instances. They have mentioned, um, hi, there's been several representatives from CCA here, and they have mentioned that there is 50 cities, maybe not 50, but there are many cities that have implemented a program such as this. Where's the data from that? Can we see it? Can we talk about it? Can we look at it? Maybe we can even be better. Maybe we could strive to have conversation and come to an agreement that works for everybody. But having a ordinance written this way is not the answer. Carrie Appling, thanks. Okay, good evening. Um, I'm Eloise Shum, I'm District 3 resident. And um, I'm, I mean, it's undoubtable that there's exploitation, outrageous exploitation of renters. But I think that um, the issue of rental registry and the rental stabilization, um, that these changing these issues, policy issues, can be complex and confusing. And the tenant landlord issues in Monterey County have historically not been properly adjudicated, and I don't think rent control will do anything really to alleviate that. Um, I appreciate that um, the city attorney gave us the state tenant protections that have changed a lot, um, even in the last couple of years. I myself I get a rental register. I get um, a subsidy through Housing Authority and HUD. And I recently read in the weekly that um, they want to change the vouchers into cash payments, which I, I mean, I just think that would be horrible because I'm a senior on a fixed income, and seniors they they could just get priced out with that kind of change, especially with inflation. So I really do fear that the rental control program would do the opposite of lowering rents because of the complexity of devising the policy and more importantly, enforcing those policies. Good afternoon. My name is Alma Cervantes, District 6. I'm the Education Agreed Director for Building Healthy Communities, but also I'm a steering committee for SURF. I don't know if you're familiar with the Community Economic Resilience Fund that is coming from the state. Um, it's been a two-year process to develop a strategic plan for economic development. And I was hearing that uh, there's a scarcity about like infrastructure and programming. So this uh, funding that is coming from the state to really respond to the economic crisis is really a good opportunity for the city to get involved. Um, it is funding projects or infrastructures that addresses our economy. And I, I'm a big believer that housing crisis is, a, is part of our economy and has to be addressed. So I invite whoever is a part of the community development department to be part of those conversations. And I'm more than open to have that conversation with you all and give you more information on how to apply for these funds as well. The other part, I think what is being said here is not only about providing um, education to our tenants, there's fear. There's fear, right? So it's also about accountability and developing matrix that hold accountable for those that have used their power. So we do have to create those infrastructure to hold accountable those that are abusing our tenants and apply that across everyone. There's a lot of education missing, not only in the community, but also those that are, are property owners that is still need some support as well, right? So, and also I hear it's not only about bringing families, sharing their story, because that's traumatic to be reviving those stories. It's about strategies and solutions. So one of the things that I'm hearing here is that we should have strategy sessions with uh, property owners that say that they're willing to have a conversation and community members to really go deeper into the solutions together versus just pointing to a problem that we know what's the problem 
and, and we should be mindful of folks that are here that took the time and are reviving their trauma about housing and, and the issues. We could just, all of us, go to all the areas and hear about the issues by knocking doors. Thank, Thank you. you. <clears throat> Buenas tardes, miembros del Concilio. Mi nombre es Gabriela Silva. Soy parte de BAC también uh, y soy organizadora uh, en sanación cultural. Hablando sobre el tema de lo que es vivienda, sabemos que el trauma en los niños es algo muy fundamental para su crecimiento. Sabemos que uh, estar en estas acciones que suceden en vivienda con familias viviendo tres, cuatro familias en una misma casa no es saludable para ellos. Sabemos que es un proceso donde ellos no van a asimilar el Tal vez ahorita no miramos el resultado de las acciones que se están tomando, pero sí vemos, a, vamos a ver a futuro los traumas. Entonces, es algo que, que vemos a diario, lo palpamos. Es triste ver familias llorando porque se han quedado fuera de casa a personas en carro. Como muchas personas han mencionado, es difícil traer estos temas, pero son acciones que se debe de, de tener conciencia, porque no es el momento, sino el futuro perdón, el futuro de, de nuestros niños, ah, pensando en las familias completas, en estas acciones. Ah, sabemos que a, a lo largo de, del resto de la reunión hubo mucha, mu, ah, muchas preguntas y respuestas. Sabemos que hay acciones que no nos están ayudando, ah, pensando en el hecho de meter una aplicación, entra un costo. El hecho de, de la basura es un costo, todo es un costo y las familias están haciendo lo, lo posible, recordando que fueron las personas que estuvieron en COVID, que estuvieron a, a, haciendo ese soporte a la ciudad. Sabemos que Salinas es económicamente sustentable, al igual que, el, que todo el Estado. Para nosotros es muy importante traer estos temas porque a, podemos hacer esa acción diferente, tener esto, esto y, y algo que, que muchas personas ya se fueron, pero creo que muchos se pararían sabiendo qué es lo que realmente uh, lo que tenemos que hacer como comunidad. Uh, si alguien se gusta parar para que se den cuenta de que la, la, la magnitud de, del problema. Gracias. Good afternoon, my name is Gab Gabriela Silva and I work with um, cultural, he cultural Healing or Sanación Cultural and CCA. I'm here to talk about the trauma that children experience in their development. Uh, right now there are many families that are, are living three or four to a home. This is a process. Maybe right now we're not seeing the results of this, but in the future we will because it's something that we are already noticing. There are people living in their cars. I know that the, these are difficult topics to talk about, and I'm not talking just about what's happening right now, but I'm talking about the future, the future of the kids. Throughout this meeting, I know that there have been many questions and many answers, but, in, but there are actions that, that need to be taken. Just the fact that somebody puts in an application for housing, there's costs involved. For garbage, there's costs involved. Families are doing what they can. These are the very families that supported Salinas during COVID. We want to uh, have Salinas be sustainable. Many have left the meeting or already, but I feel like if I were to ask that they stand up to show what a need there is, um, they would do so. Thank you. Thank you. Moving forward um, for our next meeting, if we could have the timer on the uh, projector, that'd be helpful so people can be mindful of staying within the two minutes. Um, but thank you. Good evening, uh, council members and city attorney. My name is Estrella Pacheco. I am a resident from District 3, and I am a current Salinas High School junior. 
As of right now, what I've been hearing from the concerns, I am aware about these issues that are occurring, and I am honestly thankful that my family has not been uh, that affected by it, and also because I am privileged that I am the only child my parents have. My dad works as a tractorist in agriculture, and my mom has been decided to take care of me since I was born, that way I could be more into my studies and aware of where I am going with my future. Speaking of the future, I would like to know, city attorney, when do you see all of these issues coming to an end or at least reducing themselves? Because of right now, as I am a youth, a 16 year old, even though as youths we may aspire to live and travel the world, which is something I do want to do, I want to come back to my town to make an impact positively in my community as I aspire a career in sociology. However, if rents in this town keep on increasing, all of the careers here, we will not be able to, being able to afford something that is too expensive or even just becoming a house owner of just one simple home is going to be the most impossible work to do. And if all of these rents continue on increasing, what's going to end up happening is that us youths, we will begin to see that we will need to go look somewhere else for a home. And I honestly would be heartbroken if I would not be able to come as an adult and live in the hometown where I have been growing up in. And even if this sounds very cliche, I really like the weather here and the sunsets I have seen going to school ever since I was five years old. Thank, Thank you. you. Hola, buenas tardes a todos. Gracias por darnos esta oportunidad de, de conversar con ustedes y de la manera más atenta vengo a pedirles que, y vengo en representante de mi tío que es propietario y apoyo a él. En, estoy a cargo de varias propiedades de él. En realidad yo vengo a, a des, a, por parte de él de que es, es este, está bien esta medida. Eh, él ayuda mucho a las personas con este del campo, que en realidad son muy injustos los salarios. Entonces, él no lo hace por negocio, él lo hace para ayudar a las personas y él está de acuerdo que se tomen estas medidas porque no, lo, no es un negocio. Entonces, eh, estoy aquí para que ustedes también tomen en consideración esto que está pasando. Es injusto, vivimos en este lugar, es la mano de obra del campo, que, que anualmente se le sube una cora. Mi esposo es campesino y pues gracias a mi tío que me apoya, entonces yo quiero apoyar a otras personas porque lo hace y en realidad sus casas que tiene no son esos este, eh, cobros de más de dos mil dólares. Entonces, la verdad es injusto que otros propietarios se estén llenando sus bolsas de dinero. ¿Qué está pasando? ¿De dónde vamos a llegar la, la gasolina? Igual la economía de nuestro país, ustedes como líderes, quiero que ustedes nos apoyen. ¿Qué está pasando, verdad? La economía está muy mal porque todos vivimos en estas comunidades y tenemos oportun ten queremos que nos den esas oportunidades de crecer, tener un futuro mejor. Gracias y espero que, que nos apoyen. Gracias. Sí. Liliana de la Fuente. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Liliana de la Fuente. I am here most respectfully. I have come because I take care of several properties owned by my uncle. He feels that this measure is very good. He knows that wages here are unjust and he wants to help the people. So he does agree with these measures. Labor here, it's not very well paid. I have a husband who works in the fields and when he gets an increase, it's only a 25 cent increase. I know what kind of homes a lot of people live in and a lot of them are having to pay more than 2,000 per month, which is not fair. 
it seems as if the property owners are filling their pockets. And you know what is happening with the economy. It's happening to all of us. All of us live here together, and we're, we all are looking for opportunities, and we all want to grow, and we want a better future. Buenas tardes, mi nombre es Marta Zárate y quiero agradecerles a ustedes por su tiempo de estar aquí, pero también, también quiero agradecerles por el trabajo que han estado haciendo en nuestra comunidad. La razón de, esta, de este mensaje es para mencionarles el incremento de rentas que han tenido de los dueños de casas en estos pasos de los años. Ha sido que ha Ha sido algo que ha impactado mi comunidad y sobre todo a personas que yo personalmente conozco este inconsiderable aumento de rentas. Creo que esto no solo afecta el estado económico de nuestras familias, sino también el estado emocional que esto influye en ellos. La semana pasada tuve una conversación con una familia perdón, con una familia donde me deja saber su preocupación. Ella renta una casa limitada con tres cuartos porque la dueña renta el garage y un cuarto. Ella le ha aumentado en los últimos seis meses 300 dólares pagando 2,800 al mes. Ahora le ha pedido la casa y se le está dejando saber que tiene menos de un mes para salirse. Tiene algunos meses difíciles donde esta familia se ha sentido muy incómoda por la actitud de la dueña. Ella me ha comentado la, cómo se sienten emocionalmente. Gracias a Dios, esta familia ha encontrado una casa donde podrán tener una mejor calidad de vida, puesto que estarán solos como familia. Pero el incremento de renta va a un aumento. Ahora pagarán 3,200 y esa enorme preocupación les afectará económicamente y emocionalmente. Simplemente quiero expresar estas palabras para que tomen en cuenta. Gracias. ¿La nueva renta de cuánto es? 3,200. Good afternoon, my name is Marta Zarate. And I do work in the community. And in doing so, I have come to know that in the last few years, um, there's a lot of people that I know that have been affected by the increases in rent. This not only affects them economically, it also affects their emotional state. I've had conversations with families. For instance, one of them was telling me that she lives in a home where she rents three of the rooms in the home, but the garage and one of the other bedrooms is rented out to someone else. Recently, the owner of the house asked for the house back. She, has, she had less than a month to get out. Fortunately, she was able to find a new home, but she was made very uncomfortable by the attitude of the owner. Now, in their new home, they are now paying three thousand two hundred. Nalaka Eugenia Mati Adaka. Distrito 4, Niña Quetzalola de Takaya, Takaya Yung, Lacana, Nanya Ten, it's Ocean and Nats Oyalet, Ken and this Yarenda. It's Ukukara Chans, it's Ukwi Nyans, Ken Tituna Chunya, it's Ukwira no apartamento, hijo, Ken and this Buenas tardes, mi nombre es Eugenia Matías, yo vivo en los apartamentos de la Jun. ahí nos aumentan la renta cada rato y no lo quieren arreglar, está en malas condiciones, hay cucarachas, hay ratones, ah, llevan mucho tiempo sin arreglar, hay mucha humedad y la renta sube a cada rato. Gracias. Um, she was Chatino speaking. Uh, good afternoon, my name is Eugenia Matia. I live in District 4. And um, I want to tell you that I live at the apartments on John Street, and they're in bad shape. They take a long time to make repairs, and there's mice and roaches. 
in the apartment, and they're constantly increasing our rent. Thank you. Hello, my name is Michael Mendoza, and I'm here with the Center for Community Advocacy. Um, just an observation I do want to say is that rents are increasing and they're quickly outpacing salaries and real wages, right? With that, people are being pushed into poverty and extreme poverty. More so, your social capital of your city is being lost. So far in the past two years, I've seen three professors, three high school uh, teachers, a special ed teacher, and soon to be a registered nurse and a medical coder leave this area. And they're leaving for Bakersfield, Fresno, and Sacramento. I don't know what we're going to do about this, right? Um, but something has to be done. People are crying for aid now. Affordable housing is years down the way. We have to do something now. And to address the points about data and for someone to come up here and tell you guys that you guys need to be versed in the laws, I would also say I would hope that you would look up some of the lawsuits that are being brought against landlords and property managers so you can also be well versed in the opposition that stands against rent stability. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other members of the public who'd like to comment and public comment in the council chambers? Now is the time. Seeing none in the council chambers, we're going to go out to Zoom. No comments via Zoom. No comments via Zoom. So we're going to come back to the committee. Uh, and I first want to go for a second round of questions. If any members of the committee have any further questions, now would be the time. Looking over to see. Do you, uh, <coughs> Councilmember Sandoval. Yeah. Uh, City Attorney, there was a conversation about uh, monthly uh, charges for parking spaces. Um, I know it's not prevalent in our city, but there are specific areas. Is that something that could be addressed through this? Um, yes, committee member. It's a note that I made to myself both before this meeting and now. There are certain pass-throughs that folks are being charged in addition to rent, right? Rent for a parking space, for example, and other pass-throughs. Those things will need to be considered as a part of this ordinance as well. Yeah, and there was a um, some conversation about the need for more affordable housing, more housing stock. Uh, uh, and as some of the folks know, we did have a presentation on some of our arena numbers. Could you speak to um, what's in, in the pipeline or what, what will be next and what was the holdup uh, for um, large scale housing? So I think what you're referring to, committee member, is the North of Baranda Future Growth Area, the West Area Specific Plan, and the Central Area Specific Plan. Both of those were held up in litigation by the school districts. Alisa Union in Santa Rita for quite some time, it was over three years, and that delayed housing being built at all affordable affordability levels. Now that that litigation has been resolved in the city's favor, the developers are moving very quickly forward with their maps and other entitlements um, in order to get much needed housing built in both of those areas. Thank you. Those are all my questions. Thank you. Councilmember Osorio? I don't have any questions. Thank you. Um, I have no further questions myself. We're going to go to Councilmember Comments and general direction on how to proceed. I'll start with Councilmember Sandoval. Yeah, I appreciate your presentation, City uh, Attorney. Just because it speaks to how robust our outreach will be. I appreciate you making yourself available. Uh, you know, you gave an open invitation to everybody to meet, um, and, and not just not just meet, but meet on, on their, basically on their terms. Um, you know, I know we'll be having some community meetings. Uh, I appreciate the offer about um, having a dialogue between renters and landlords, so I'll, uh, you know, I'll, I'll take you up on that, because I, I do think that's part of what renters need is they need more education. I know the city is working on um, robust uh, education as well um, and, and to help both tenants and landlords. Um, but I appreciate that. Um, you know, something does have to be done. There is uh, definitely a, a substantial need in our community for something to be done. Uh, what that looks like um, is, is yet to be determined. Uh, but, you know, we encourage everyone to participate. Um, and I just look forward to this process. And I hope we can find solutions, of equitable solutions for everybody. Councilmember Osorio. Yeah, thank you, uh, City Attorney, for meeting with um, with folks from the community. And, and, and I, I do also agree that um, 
when it comes to to rents and and being able to create those relationships between landlords and renters, um, there's there's a really big opportunity there. Um, I do also agree with education and making sure that folks know what their rights are as as far as um, uh, the renters. Um, I, I look forward to continuing this conversation and being able to bring, um, obviously, community with a lot of the, um, the owners and property owners and continue the conversations. But I, I do agree um, that there's something that we need to do um, just because there's um, it's a really clear message that um, there's something that needs to be done when it comes to, to rents. I don't know if it's rent stabilization or you know all of the other terms that we're using, but something needs to be done and I look forward to having that conversation. Um, so that's, those are my comments. Thank you for your comments, members of this committee, and thank you for the members of the public who came to speak on the side and representing various different viewpoints. I think it's critical for all of us to be a part of this process, and certainly um, the process that has been laid out by the city attorney is one that will provide for ample engagement on the development of this uh, set of policies, um, and also the opportunity to answer questions. I do think that there are many questions that need to be answered from the community and by this council, and so I would encourage my colleagues on this council to continue to ask questions if you need clarification on something. That's how you make good informed decisions if you ask questions to things you're uncertain about. Um, in terms of general overall direction, I would say I do support moving forward at the creation um, and soliciting input on the uh, rent stabilization ordinance, on the tenant protection ordinance, and on the anti-harassment ordinance. And so I would support that as general direction of this committee. Um, we want to make sure we're creating an environment in our city to where uh, nobody is being taken advantage of and people are not being abused. And I recognize that that's one that's going to uh, make people uncomfortable at times, the discussions have to be had. But ultimately, I do have faith in our community that we will come to a compromise and an ordinance that truly um, uplifts our community. And that's really what's most important. Certainly, people's opinions are important to the process, but at the end of the day, we want to make sure we're protecting people in our city. And the truth is people are being abused in our city, and the truth is people are struggling to make ends meet, and they are facing housing insecurity in this moment. And so I support the general efforts to uh, expand the, the creation of housing within our city, but we do have to take a multi-pronged approach to addressing this, making sure people stay housed, making sure we're creating housing, making sure we're uh, supporting um, safe living conditions in our city and I think that those uh, goals can be accomplished through the priorities of the city and through the establishment of these three different ordinances. Um, I heard landlords come and speak about um, the importance of not using a blanket approach uh, in a manner that would harm good landlords. I think everyone in this room shares that goal. And what I would say to those that are fair landlords, if you are a fair landlord, then an anti-harassment ordinance would have no effect on you. If you are a fair landlord, then making sure we have ordinances in place that prevent and prohibit you from being able to evict a tenant for no reason would not pertain to you. If you are a fair landlord, then making sure that um, working people uh, are not squeezed out of their rental units would not pertain to you. Because what I've heard from a lot of fair landlords is they're not raising their uh, rents to the maximum amount if they're being fair, right? Um, but certainly 10% is far too much for working families in our city. Nobody's income goes up by 10%. And I recognize that other issues are going up uh, that cause uh, the management of rental units to be higher, but that is something that is provided for an opportunity to address through the ordinance and the individual rent adjustment provisions of the ordinance. But the truth is 10% is far too high for working people in our city to afford in terms of increases annually. We do need an anti-harassment ordinance and we do need tenant protections in our city that ensure people are not being evicted um, without cause. And so that's my general um, direction uh, for this committee. And I would just ask for a nod of approval from my colleagues if we're in agreement with that. OK, so Mr. City Attorney, you have the um, general direction from this committee. Thank you, everyone, for your participation in this process. We're going to go ahead and deem this report received. And we're going to move on to future agenda items. I don't believe there's anything from staff, and is there anything from the committee in terms of future agenda items? Seeing none, 
at 6.03, we will adjourn this meeting.